back for more. Today I'm going to show you how to save and recall user points and measure positions on our Fanuc EDM so that you can run multiple work zeros and setups on one machine without having to relocate each setup every time you want to switch them. So the first thing we do, we got two pretty different setups here. And so the first thing we're going to do, we're going to pick up zero on our first part which looks suspiciously like a quarter inch drive, quarter inch hex socket, but never mind that. We're just gonna jog our wire over, pick up the center of it, and then we'll save it and store it as a user point and a measure point. And I'll show you the difference between those as we go along. So if you have one of these, hopefully you already know how to pick up your locations and thread your wires and things. Uh, if you don't, this isn't the video for that. You're on your own see if I got it yeah so we're gonna pick up the center of the hole and then I'll set my Z height positioning hole center sure now the Jeopardy theme plays while it does its magic this is pretty bog standard it's just going around picking up the edges of the hole and then it's going to average it out. It picks it up a couple times, averages it out, and then picks up your whole center. Check whatever social media you kids use these days. What am I talking about? You're all on Facebook. You're all like 55 years old. She's picked it up. So we're at the center of the hole. It asks you if you want to set measure point. I'm going to say no. So we are going to go to position. We're going to save it as measure point 28. There's nothing in there. So we'll go to measure point. 28, so it stores my XY coordinates, and I'll comment setup one. Always name your work locations, because if it's not named, I'm gonna overwrite it when I come along and do mine. So we stored that, we stored our XY, did not store Z. So now I'm gonna go to jog, I'm gonna come down and set my Z, because we're pretty far away, and we don't need to be that far away. So I'm just gonna eyeball it like I do most things. Perfect. So we'll call that good for our Z height. And now I'm going to go to our user points. You don't have to do all this, I'm just, because I can. So I'm gonna say this is user point three. Do I wanna do that? Yeah, user point three. I'm using user point number two, so I don't wanna overwrite that one. So user point number three, store, is stored your X, your Y, your taper and U and V, and your Z height. So now it'll recall all that when we go to come back here when we're done. Jog. I think we're done with this one. We saved that. And this is all saved in the machine coordinates. So you don't have to worry about absolute incremental. This is all absolute positions off the machine coordinates. So now we're gonna come over and we're gonna pick up our second setup. And then I'm gonna show you how you can switch back and forth between them and some of the things that you can and can't do with the different styles of location saving, location storage. So we picked up the center, we picked up the center of our socket. I'm gonna pick up the front left corner of this block. Looks like we need to clean some <laughs> out of the head. As long as it threads the wire, I don't care. So I've already more or less positioned it. We'll just position the wire like the picture says. That's fine, 250, 250, set fin, cycle start, and then we wait. And she's just gonna come along, beat both sides and move to the corner. This machine can pick up zeros from the wire edge or the wire center. I always pick up from the wire edge because it's easier for me to keep it straight. I would rather just know that I'm 5 thousandths off center in X and Y rather than having the machine do it for me. Your mileage may vary, it's just what I prefer. Especially if you're picking up quick and dirty setups for sectioning parts or wiring your buddy's knife in half or something like that. You don't really care, you're just programming it quick and dirty. The edge pickups go a lot faster than the circle pickups, just like that. So now we're at the theoretical intersection of the front left corner. It's asking me if I want to set a measure point again, I'm going to tell it no. We're going to set that later. 
So user point P3, we set on setup one. We're gonna set setup two as user point P4. P4, and then remember, since the user points store your Z axis data, we're gonna set our Z. Measure points do not store Z axis data. And I would recommend that you be careful jogging your head down on top of your workpiece like that could get a little bit messy. So we set our Z, we set our X, Y. We're gonna store user point P4. And we're gonna come over here to our measure points. We stored setup one as number 28. Number 29's stored as something, but it's not labeled, so I'm gonna overwrite it. Store that X, Y, no Z. Then I'm gonna comment it. Setup two. Uh, two. Bear with me. I gotta. I gotta spell out big words. So there we go. And then just for fun, we're gonna jog the machine all the way over here, and we're gonna zero everything out. So if I push go on my program, it's gonna start running in the air, way over there, away from my setup. I might even have it jogged all the way down on the table for cutting off some thin stock or something like that. There, there, all the way down. So she's jogged all the way down. Our zeros are all set all the way over there. And we want to run setup two. You walked in, the boss says, hey, setup two is hot all of a sudden, even though it's been sitting in the machine, we've had the material for six weeks, it's hot now. Wasn't hot last week, but now it's hot. So we got to run this tonight. No problem. I'll show you how to recall the measure points first. So you got 32 measure points and you only have three user points. So you got a lot more sh that you can have stored, but you gotta, you gotta take it a little more careful because our head's all the way down there. If I just recall setup two right now, it is not gonna pick that head up. It is gonna run that head right over into my vice and part and then it's gonna break the head off and break the block and your boss is gonna be upset, probably. So the first thing we're gonna do Jog Z up. You just jog it all the way up. You get paid by the hour. We might even turn the feed down and jog it up. There we go. So now we're well clear. Z is not going to hit. No issue. We can recall different measure points. Set up two. P29. Set thin. Cycle start. It's coming back over to the XY coordinates. It does not care where Z is. So that's why we have to jog it way up out of the way. There you go. Recall that point. Zero out your X, Y. Repick up your Z. And then you can start running your program for setup two. What's that? The boss comes back out, says can that. We gotta run setup one. Setup one's hot now. Setup two can go back to waiting for another six weeks. We're gonna run setup one. So our zero's in the center of the part. Jog mode, cut wire because it's gonna move over to that point we saved, which is in the center of the part. So it's a little bit harder to do with the wire in there. We're gonna cut the wire. Still in measure point, P28, set up one, set thin, cycle start. Coming over to set up one. The Z axis is still not moving. It will continue to not move. There we are, recalled our Measure point 28 for our setup one. Set your Z, run setup one. So now if you have if you have active setups that you want to bounce between, you're probably gonna to want to use your user points because they will store your Z axis data and they will move your Z so you don't have to pick it up every time. But you only get three of them. So you can only run three setups with your user points. We'll just ah. off into the corner over here, moving at the speed of overtime. Yeah, looks good. So if I was to call that measure point for setup two, it would hit it. It would run right into the block and you'd have to realign the head and possibly change countries and names. So we're gonna zero everything out there. Look at that, you know, we're cutting holes in the air over here. P4, set fin, cycle start. It picks the head up to the Z height that you set it at before it jogs over. When we go from setup two to setup one, 
it's gonna move over and jog the head down. So it will clear the Z axis before it moves. That won't save you if you have something in between them, but when it's moving between your user points, it will clearance the Z axis before it does anything. So if you're going to a taller setup, it's gonna pick the head up first before it moves. If you're going to a shorter setup, it's gonna move and then drop the head down. It's very convenient. So there we are, zero everything out. No need to pick up the Z. You just zero out your absolute positions and run your program. What's that you say? Back to setup one. Maybe we're running op one on setup two and op two on setup one. Who's to say? Maybe you just wanna make sets of parts. You run one of one part, one of the other part, and you're changing setups like that. No problem. Go to P3, set fin, cycle start. It's gonna move your X, Y, and then drop your Z down to the Z height that you set. Make sure the column doesn't hit any other setups. There you go. Zero out your absolute positions and you're ready to run setup one. So where you'll run into problems. So if we go back to setup two, picks the head up first and then it's gonna move X, Y. Something to watch out for. It's not really a problem, but it could come around and bite you in the ass if you're not paying attention. So we have a Z limit position. So if we set that Z limit position on our tall fixture, the head won't go down past that. If I go to jog, well, we'll go to step because I'm not that confident. If I go to step and try and jog it down, it throws a Z over travel. It won't let me move the head down. So if we were to go back to setup one, it's gonna wanna move over and drop the head down, except it won't because we told it, you're not allowed to drop the head down past this point. P3, set fin, cycle start. It's gonna move your XY and then it's gonna try and drop the head down and throw the same over travel alarm. Speak of the devil. So it won't let you do it. Z over travel. All you have to do, is zero out your X limit position. So with the downside of that is that it will let you drop the head down as far as it goes. So if you're you know, if you're over your other setup and you fat finger it and you jog Z down instead of Y, it'll drop that head right down on top of your part. So you gotta be careful with things like that. This is more the sort of thing that the setup band will set up and then the operator just has to P4, set fin, cycle start. But if you're setting this up, this is something that you wanna be aware of. So we zero it out. And now because we zeroed out, our Z limit position, it'll come over and drop the head down. It's as simple as that. I mean, there's a lot of things that can go wrong, but it's real basic. You're just, you're storing your machine coordinates and you're recalling them. Your measure points have no Z axis movement. Your user points have Z axis data. So whichever one works for you is the one that you should probably use or not. There's a lot of schools of thought on that. So there's the difference between user points and measure points how to set them, how to recall them, and some of the applications for either one. So now that you got it documented on YouTube, you don't have to come get me every time you got questions. If you like that, you found it useful, leave a like, and put your <gasps> phone down and get back to work.